The future Queen Mary I of England, better known as Bloody Mary, was born on February 18, 1516. She was the daughter of King Henry VIII and his first wife, Queen Catherine of Aragon. At the time of Mary's birth, Henry had very much respect for Catherine, and he loved his new daughter, even though he would have preferred a son. The first few years of Mary's life were very happy, as her father loved her very much at this time. Catherine of Aragon educated Mary just the way she had been educated, and Mary even learned Spanish. Mary never enjoyed good health and was ill most of the time. Like with most royal children, the question of Mary's marriage was brought up very early, and, at the age of two, she was betrothed to the eldest son of King Francis I of France, but that only lasted three years. Henry was quick to find her a new future husband, and, at the age of six, she was betrothed to Charles V of the Holy Roman Empire. Charles was previously betrothed to Mary's aunt, and Henry VIII's sister, also named Mary, Mary Tudor. Charles was Mary's first cousin through her mother, and was 15 years older than Mary. The engagement was broken off three years later. Henry also considered marrying his daughter to King Francis I of France and James V of Scotland. Mary was the fifth child of Henry VIII and Catherine of Aragon, but she was the only one to survive past infancy. She had a brother, Henry, Duke of Cornwall, and King Henry was quite relieved to have a son. But Henry, Duke of Cornwall, died at only 52 days. The last time a woman had tried to become ruler in her own right, England went through nearly 20 years of civil war, and Henry didn't want that to happen again, especially because he was only the second monarch of the new Tudor dynasty. Catherine of Aragon was too old to have another child, but it seemed more possible that one of her ladies-in-waiting, Anne Boleyn, could have a son. It would be good for both Henry and Anne if they married. Henry needed a legitimate son, and Anne could be Queen of England. Henry did have an illegitimate son, Henry Fitzroy, and King Henry may have considered marrying Mary to Henry Fitzroy so that they could become co-rulers after his death, but thankfully, the siblings never married. Henry decided to divorce Catherine. Henry argued that in the book of Leviticus, it said that a man shouldn't marry his brother's widow or else he would not have children. Catherine had previously been married to Henry's brother, Arthur, who had died of sweating sickness after a few months, but she said that she never consummated the marriage. The Pope believed Catherine and refused to allow Henry to annul his marriage. This all ended in Henry VIII breaking from the Catholic Church and creating the Church of England, which he made himself the head of. He gave himself a divorce and married Anne Boleyn. Henry VIII did not allow Mary and Catherine to see each other. He said that if they wanted to be allowed to visit each other regularly, Mary would have to acknowledge that she was illegitimate, and Catherine would have to acknowledge that Henry was the head of the Church of England and that Anne Boleyn was the new queen. They both refused, so they were only allowed to visit each other once over five years. Catherine of Aragon died five years after Henry divorced her, and Mary was not allowed to go to her mother's funeral. Her father and Anne Boleyn wore yellow, which either meant that they were happy that Catherine was dead, or it was supposed to be a respectful gesture, as yellow is the color of mourning in Spain, where Catherine was from. Anne Boleyn had a daughter, Elizabeth, who took Mary's old title of Princess of Wales. Mary, who was only 17, became a lady-in-waiting to her half-sister. After just three years of marriage, Anne Boleyn was executed by Henry, who claimed that she was guilty of adultery. Eleven days after Anne's death, Henry married Jane Seymour, who helped Henry and Mary reconcile. Henry wanted Mary to say that he was the head of the Church of England and that she was illegitimate. Mary was eventually forced to do so and was given her own household, where she enjoyed a much better life than she had had while Anne Boleyn was queen. Jane Seymour gave birth to a son, 
Edward, and Mary was made his godmother. When Jane Seymour died of childbed fever a few weeks after the birth, Mary acted as chief mourner at her funeral. Henry married three more times after Jane's death. First, he married the ugly Anna of Cleves, the extremely young Catherine Howard, who was younger than Mary, and Catherine Parr. Catherine Parr was the one who convinced Henry to put Mary and Elizabeth back in the line of succession. Shortly after that, Henry died, leaving nine-year-old Edward as King of England, and Mary as heir to the throne. Edward was a devout Protestant, and he made many reforms. Many people were still Catholic, so there were quite a few rebellions. Mary wanted to practice Catholicism freely, and she and Edward fought very much over religion. They had an argument in front of the whole court, during which both Mary and Edward were reduced to tears. Finally, in 1553, Edward died of tuberculosis at the age of 15. Before he died, he had changed the succession. Henry VIII had had two sisters, an older sister, Margaret, who became Queen of Scotland, and a younger sister, Mary, who was briefly Queen of France. Margaret, Queen of Scotland's descendants, were the Catholic kings of Scotland, whom Henry VIII hadn't wanted to inherit the throne of England. Mary, Queen of France, hadn't had any children with the King of France, but she had had children with her second husband, Henry VIII's best friend. Edward decided to skip Margaret, Queen of Scotland's, descendants, just like Henry had wanted, but he also decided to skip over his two sisters. He was afraid that if Mary became queen, she would undo all his reforms and make England Catholic again. He decided that if Mary was illegitimate, it would be easy to skip over her, but if she was illegitimate, then his other sister, Elizabeth, who was also Protestant, would also be illegitimate, as Henry's marriages to both Catherine of Aragon and Anne Boleyn were declared invalid. So, Edward decided to skip over both of them and make Mary Queen of France's Protestant granddaughter, Lady Jane Grey, his heir. Mary was not supposed to know that her brother had died, but Mary got the news anyway and began raising troops. Jane was unpopular as many people hadn't heard of her before, and because many people wanted Mary to become queen. After just nine days, Jane was arrested and Mary became Queen Regnant of England. She had herself declared legitimate and was neutral towards Protestants and Catholics at first. She was initially very popular. A year into her reign, she decided that she wanted to get married. She was in her late 30s and needed to have an heir as soon as possible. She married Philip, the heir to the throne of Spain, which the English weren't happy about. They didn't want a Spanish prince to become King of England, but Mary married him anyway. He was her cousin, Charles V's son. If you remember, Mary had previously been betrothed to Charles V himself. Philip had been married before and had a son from his first marriage, but the English were still afraid that they would become part of the growing Spanish Empire. Philip later did become King of Spain, which meant that Mary was also briefly Queen of Spain. Mary loved her new husband, but Philip, 11 years her junior, didn't find her that attractive. He spent most of his time in Europe, although he was also co-king of England. Soon, Mary's belly started to swell, and she was declared pregnant. If she had a Catholic heir, Elizabeth wouldn't become Queen of England, and Mary's reforms wouldn't be undone. Mary called Elizabeth to watch the birth, but after the 11th month, there was still no baby, and Mary did not have a swollen belly anymore. Following the embarrassment, Philip returned to Europe and did not come back to England until just before Mary's death. Mary was much less popular after her marriage, and there were many rebellions in favor of Elizabeth and Lady Jane Grey. Elizabeth was suspected of being involved in Wyatt's rebellion, after which Lady Jane Grey was executed and Elizabeth was imprisoned in the Tower of London. Mary almost had Elizabeth executed, but decided against it and had her released. Mary soon reinstated heresy laws, and 800 important Protestants fled England. Mary had around 300 Protestants executed, most of them burned to death. That earned Mary the nickname, 
Bloody Mary, but it didn't mean that she was a bad ruler. Every ruler killed people, and most other rulers at the time killed more people than Mary. She is known as Bloody Mary probably because she was a female ruler, and because she killed so many people during her short, five-year reign. Towards the end of Mary's life, Philip came back to England to try and get Mary to declare war on France. Mary wanted to declare war, even though her counselors did not want to, but eventually, England declared war on France. At first, the English did fairly well, but they ended up losing Calais to the French. Calais had been ruled by the English since they had taken it during the Hundred Years' War. The loss was yet another thing that made Mary less popular. Mary began to believe that she was pregnant once again, but it was a false pregnancy. It became obvious that Mary was dying, and Philip, before Mary was even dead, sent a marriage proposal to Elizabeth. Mary had to acknowledge Elizabeth as her heir, as she had no children. On November 17, 1558, Mary died at the age of 42, after five bloody years on the throne, probably of uterine or ovarian cancer. Mary is buried with her sister, Elizabeth, even though she had wanted to be buried with her mother, Catherine of Aragon.